Have you suffered a serious back injury? Then you're in danger of needlessly suffering long-term pain. Hi, I'm Dave Buckley and I'm a personal injury attorney. The current medical procedure for treating serious back or neck injuries isn't designed to find the source of your injury. It's designed to save the health insurance industry money and your health and well-being are at risk because of it. I know a way around the health insurance red tape. Listen to me for, for just a few minutes and I will tell you the one thing you need to know about getting the medical treatment you need and deserve. But you need to know this first. The most common injuries I see are back and neck injuries due to motor vehicle crashes and slip and falls. The most serious of these back and neck injuries cause pain to shoot down your arms and legs and that's an indication of a spine injury and most likely a herniated disc that's protruded out of its disc space and it's now hitting a nerve. See this right here? This is a model of a disc in your spine. The top and bottom part, they are the vertebrae. It's made up of bone and the middle part, the red part here is your disc. It's a soft and spongy-like substance, kind of like a water balloon, and the top and bottom of the vertebrae keep the disc sandwiched in place, and they work together to provide strength and flexibility to your, to your back that allow you to bend and twist. But when your body suffers a sudden trauma, like getting rear-ended in a car crash, your spine flexes, and, it, and it's designed to absorb the impact. But sometimes, your spine flexes so much that it causes a disc to pop out of its disc space, causing a protrusion like this. See that? Ouch! That's a disc herniation. It's a bubble popping out and hitting nerves that are part of your central nervous system. That little yellow section right there, you see that little yellow thing popping out? That is a nerve. And when nerves get touched, they get irritated. And nerves don't like to be irritated. And when they're irritated, it causes you pain. A disc herniation and the pain it causes in an, is an injury that isn't going away anytime soon. And that pain, it can be life altering if you're not given the proper medical treatment as soon as possible. Well, the problem is that most times it isn't addressed using the best methods as soon as possible. The treatment narrative goes something like this. You get hurt in a car crash or in a slip and fall and you're brought to the emergency room. They're most likely going to do an x-ray and a CT to rule out any broken bones or any internal bleeding, but disc injuries in your spine don't show up on x-rays and they don't show up on CT scans. You need an MRI for that. But unless it's an emergency, they're not going to do an MRI, which is the most important and most effective diagnostic tool to determine if there is a spine injury. You're not even told an MRI is an option. Why? Because it's expensive. MRI imaging can cost thousands of dollars. They shouldn't cost that much, but they do. MRIs are paid for either by you out of pocket or by your health insurance company. If it's your health insurance company, then getting an MRI requires getting prior insurance approval. If a doctor orders an MRI without getting prior insurance authorization, the doctor's putting his or her hospital in financial jeopardy of not getting paid for the MRI. And they're really putting their hospital in financial jeopardy if you don't have health insurance and you're self-pay and you haven't paid for it yet. So treatment professionals learn early on to be conservative with their treatment plans. While, you know, when you're in the emergency room, your pain complaints, they'll be documented and you'll be cleared to go home with instructions to follow up with your primary care provider, your, your PCP. And when you do follow up with your PCP, they will tell you the next steps in your care. But here's the scary thing. You're walking out the door of the emergency room not knowing that over the next six months you're on a course of treatment that has the potential to transform you into someone unrecognizable. Someone you don't want to become. You'll go home after leaving the hospital and that night you won't be able to sleep because of the shooting pain down your legs or arms. You won't be able to brush your teeth or walk down the hallway for the next week, if not next six months, without holding on to the wall. You're exhausted from pain and you are cranky. Boy, oh boy, are you cranky. So about five, six, or seven days after getting injured, you go to your PCP and you describe the pain that you're in, the stabbing, shooting pain coursing through your limbs like lightning bolts. Or maybe you don't have pain, but your fingers or toes are numb or tingling or always stone cold. The doctor or the PA or the nurse practitioner, they'll listen and they'll nod knowingly about what you're describing as very much a classic case of a disc injury. 
but do they order an MRI, the one thing they know will absolutely tell them if you have a disc injury? No, of course not. Why? Because it's too soon in the treatment process. Insurance won't cover it unless other things have been done first. They'll prescribe you some pain medication that may, emphasis on may, dull your pain. But it won't fix your spine injury. It won't pop your protruding disc back into place. Instead, they'll tell you to come back in a week or so if you're still in pain. So that's what you do. You put your trust in the people who are trained in the things that you know little about. You spend the next week in pain, pain that just doesn't stop. It's always on. Pain that stabs one of your butt cheeks and shoots down one of your legs every single moment you move and sometimes without even moving. Or pain that starts in your neck and runs down your arm to, to your fingertips. It's not like anything you've ever experienced. But life goes on. It has to. You still have to go to work. You still have to take care of the kids. You still have to take care of your pets. Life doesn't stop because you got hurt. You do the best you can, but you're not getting better. In fact, it's getting worse. Reaching for the salt shaker at dinner sent pain down your leg so powerful you screamed out loud, scaring the people at the table. It's a struggle to put on your pants and shoes. So you've started to wear sweatpants and switched to wearing slip-on shoes. Why? Because that causes less pain getting dressed. You've given up fashion because you just don't care anymore about your appearance. You're choosing your wardrobe by what hurts the least getting dressed and undressed. Now here's the thing. You think you're handling yourself well. So you think. Others around you may have a different opinion. You try to keep on doing the things you've always done. Carrying the groceries into the house, picking up the kids, picking up after the kids, going to the gym, going out with friends. But it comes with a price. And the price is always increased pain. With increased pain comes impatience and a few impulsive, unfiltered, unkind words to those around you. Feelings are hurt. Apologies are made and made and made again. Maybe you start making a cocktail or two for, you know, medicinal purposes. This is the beginning of a pattern. That week that your PCP told you to wait out before making a follow-up appointment has gone by and you are no better. So you make that follow-up appointment with your PCP and you tell them about your back and butt and leg pain. And they diagnose you with a back injury with sciatica. Sciatica is what they call that pain radiating down your leg. They recommend physical therapy, PT for short. You make that PT appointment and you're told it will take a month before they can see you. And once you're finally seen, they give you the plan. In-house, two times a week for six weeks to start and they give you a home exercise plan to follow as well. You try to fit in with your already tight schedule. You go before work. You go after work. You have to plan with your partner to adjust their schedule to take care of the morning and afternoon routines. Or maybe you ask a neighbor or your parents. Somebody. Anybody. Somewhere along the way during the PT process, you think it's helping. Maybe a little. But not really. It's now been three months since your injury. And this pain that you have has now been built into your life. You know what movements causes a pain for you. You know what positions to sleep in that will cause the least amount of discomfort. You know that if you go to the gym, you'll pay for it later. But you're not going to let this inconvenience control your life, even though it does. A new normal is in place, an unpleasant new normal. Every minute of every day is built around pain management. Maybe you're drinking every day now. Or you can't go a day without taking your prescription of Vicodin or Percocets. Maybe you're wearing a back brace. The relationships with your family, friends, and coworkers are strained and teetering on implosion. At the beginning of this nightmare, you were able to catch yourself before lashing out. But now, not so much. You're tired of apologizing. You're hurt and in pain. They should understand this by now, shouldn't they? And too bad if they don't, right? You go back to your PCP after physical therapy is done and it took a month to get that PC appointment because they don't consider you an urgent case at this point. Once there, you tell your provider that you've had no improvement, that you had the same symptoms from the date of your first appointment, the same pain every single day. You've resigned yourself to the fact that this is your life now. But then your PCP says, finally says, that after all of the conservative treatment you've received, after all of the over-the-counter medication, the prescription medication, the physical therapy, and the home exercise plan, that now is the time to get an MRI. An MRI? 
You weren't even aware getting an MRI was part of the plan. What's an MRI going to do? So you follow along. Because you know why, you know, at this point, why not? Your doctor makes the referral and your insurance company reviews the request. They see you've attempted all of the conservative treatments and they approve the MRI. Now, it takes a month to get the MRI appointment and you go and you get it done and it takes another month to get the appointment to have your doctor read the MRI results. It shows that you have a two-level disc protrusion at L4, L5. Those are the two discs at the base of your spine. There are two discs in your spine that are popping out of their spaces and pressing up against the nerves along your spine, like this, like I showed you before. Ow! Ow! Right? <laughs> that's what's happening. And that's why you're in pain. And that's why you have sciatica. Now, it's been six months since the date of your injury. Finally, an answer. And there's relief having an answer. It doesn't make the pain go away, but at least it gives you the peace of mind knowing that it wasn't all in your head. And so now you're given a new treatment plan. They'll inject the protruding discs with a solution made up of a combination of an anesthetic and an anti-inflammatory. It takes another month to get the ESI appointment. Once there, you're told that you'll have three rounds of this procedure, once every three months. They give you the first series of injections at this appointment. And in a few days, the anesthetic will provide great pain relief. Meanwhile, the anti-inflammatory is working to reduce those disc bubbles and back them off of those nerves that they're hitting. You can't believe it. It's working. At the end of the first month of the first round, you're feeling great, practically pain-free. You're thinking you're out of the woods. Your family breathes a sigh of relief. Your old self is starting to peek through. But at the end of the second month of the first round, the anesthetic has worn off and you're back to having that debilitating pain. You're angry and frustrated and it's affecting not only you, but the people around you. You're short-tempered, your partner, the kids, the pets, co-workers are all walking on eggshells. That person is back. Your daily snarky comments and intolerance have compounded and they've taken their toll. Things have changed at home. There's been a transformation in your marriage or relationship and it's not a good one. You finally have your second round of ESI treatment. This time, the anesthetic lasts a little bit longer, almost the full three months, but not quite. You then have the third round, same results as the first two sessions, temporary relief, but nothing curative. You're still in pain. Your PCP requests and gets insurance approval for a second MRI. You get that second MRI and it shows you still have disc protrusions at L4, L5. You've done everything you've been told to do to get better without success. You're told that you are now a surgical candidate. They're recommending a discectomy a procedure where they cut away that part of your disc that's protruding out and hitting that nerve. You're both relieved and afraid at the same time, relieved that you still have a path to recovery, but afraid that it requires invasive spinal surgery. It's been 16 months since you were first injured. You have a decision to make now. You can continue with the ESI therapy, but you already know that that's a temporary solution. Surgery holds the promise of full relief. And so you decide to have the surgery and you do have the surgery and you're told it's successful. You complete the post-operative rehabilitation program and for the first time in nearly two years, you are completely pain-free. It's amazing. You finally got there. But at what cost? Looking back at over those two years, your pain and how you handled it have caused a lot of harm to your relationships and to your job. Some irreparable. Could something have been done differently? Could this highway to hell have been bypassed? Yes, absolutely, in my opinion. How? By getting an MRI within the first 10 days of being injured. Getting an MRI would have changed everything. Remember this, in, in the narrative I just laid out a few minutes ago. It was the first six months, that time before getting the first MRI, that was the transformational turning point in that person's life. A transformation that should have been and could have been avoided at all costs. In those first six months, you had to adjust to a life of chronic pain, and no one handles that well. It wasn't until you had your first MRI that they finally saw what was wrong. If an MRI had been ordered within the first 10 days of being injured, the L4, L5 disc protrusions would have been discovered. 
Six months of useless conservative treatment would have been avoided. Six months of out of your mind pain would have been avoided. Six months of relationship and personality altering conduct would have been avoided. ESI therapy would have been started within days of the MRI results. And it would have provided months of pain relief. Pain relief that would have kept you, for the most part, at your pre-injury temperament level. And surgery would have been scheduled and concluded before any negative and possibly permanent changes occurred to your personality, your relationships with loved ones, your life. Now, you know, you might ask yourself, okay, this is all well and good to know, but who's aware of any of this at the outset? Who knows any of this when you get injured? Well, a good personal injury attorney is going to know this. A good personal injury attorney is going to know human anatomy. A good personal injury attorney is going to know the signs of a disc injury. A good personal injury attorney is going to know how to get you an MRI within 10 days of being injured. A good personal injury attorney is going to know how to read your MRI report. And a good personal injury attorney is going to know the type of medical specialist you should be seeing for the type of back injury or neck injury you have. The difference between knowing and not knowing the best course of medical treatment for a serious back or neck injury can send your life in very different directions. And knowing the difference can help you from becoming a person that no one wants to become. If you ever suffer a back injury and wind up with shooting pain down your arms or legs, or if you have numbness or tingling in your fingers and toes, that's an injury that requires an immediate MRI. And don't let anyone tell you differently. And if your back injury or your neck injury was caused through no fault of your own, call a personal injury attorney right away. The call is always free. I'm Dave Buckley. I'm a personal injury attorney. I hope you never suffer a serious back or neck injury through no fault of your own, but feel free to call me if you have. I'd be happy to talk to you about it. And I have lots of other videos on personal injury, so feel free to check those out as well. Thanks for watching.